Good morning, everybody. How are you? Are you all healthy? Good? Happy to hear it? All right. Well, I have a text for you this morning from Ecclesiastes. The excellence of knowledge is that wisdom gives life to those who have it. Do you believe that? All right, right now, at least in the United States, we are on overload with health and medical information, are we not? We are just bombarded right and left, no matter where you turn, whether you're looking for health information or not. The other night, I, just for the fun of it, I counted the ads during just the world news. In the middle, there were 15 ads How many do you think were health-related? Eleven of them. From what medicine you ought to be taking, as if you know, because those are all prescription meds, pretty much, that they're recommending to you, to what underwear you ought to be wearing to stay drier, okay? So it's hard sometimes to sort out those things. Even in the natural world, we hear, oh, you ought to be on this supplement. No, you really should be taking this one. Or really, there's a whole pot of them you should be taking, right? So how do we sort that out? Over the past few months, I personally have been bombarded with advice, health advice, one of the hazards of getting sick. And some of it's been well-meaning, Some of it has been, hmm, and most of that, hmm, has come from the medical professionals, not my dear friends here at church. So it got got me to thinking about how we sort that stuff out. How do we know what is truth and what is error in this time when Satan is seeking so hard to deceive us on so many levels? So I went back to how we decide what is spiritual truth. We sort of follow this criteria, do we not? First, it has to match the Bible. If it doesn't go along with the Bible, we don't believe it. Then we compare it with the spirit of prophecy. We pray about it, and we consult with godly friends. Well, I would propose that we do the same thing with health information. It cannot be contrary to the scriptures, correct? Several months ago, we talked about wine drinking, and we knew we could rule out the advice right now that you need to drink a daily glass of wine for your life, because Proverbs 21, verse 1, says wine is a mocker, right? Does he say, oh yeah, drink, a, drink some every day and it'll make you healthy, wealthy, and wise? No. So we can rule out that advice. That makes it easy. But the scripture is silent on a lot of the health issues that we need to deal with right now. So we go to the spirit of prophecy next. And boy, we could spend all day. I could take up pastor's entire sermon and keep you the whole afternoon comparing what Ellen White says compared with what we're being told by medical science right now. But I'd like to just share with you a couple things. Now, disclaimer, what I'm going to show you next, I do not believe, so don't check out on me, right, and listen to my punchline. When I go to look for new medical advice, there are multiple reputable sites on the internet. And one of them that I find quite useful most of the time is Medline. But here's what they offer about green tea and coffee, okay? I do not believe this. Remember this part. Green tea is the healthiest beverage on the planet. Yeah, I know, that was my first response. Excuse me, I thought it was water. All right, they go on to list 10 supposedly great benefits for drinking green tea every day. Then they say coffee is actually very healthy. And then they have a whole list of all the benefits, 13 health benefits of drinking coffee every day that have supposedly been confirmed by actual human studies. But Ellen White gave very different advice, didn't she? 
And here's just one of them. Tea, coffee, and tobacco are all stimulating and contain poisons. Wow, that doesn't sound like something I should be drinking every day, correct? They are not only unnecessary but harmful and should be discarded if we would add to knowledge temperance. So who do I decide I'm believing? Healthline or God's messenger? <laughs> I'm picking God's messenger every time, all right? But sometimes the things are not in the scriptures and they're not in spirit of prophecy. So then what do we do? And I say that if there's not a thus saith the Lord, it's the time that we need to be praying even more diligently than we ever have before. It's okay to say, Lord, I really don't know. Should I be taking this? Do I need this? Do I believe this doctor or do I not? We need to be praying. And then we also need to seek godly counsel. Now, I would give a warning for that, because despite that I think we're all trying to be godly, we don't all have the same medical base to be providing that godly knowledge. So here's my warning. When someone, no matter how well-meaning they are or how credentialed they may be, is giving you medical or health advice, these are appropriate questions to ask. Do they have your best interest in heart, at heart? Okay, is this someone that you know really cares about you and is also going to be joining you in prayer? Do they have a complete understanding of your health condition? That's essential, right? Because you can't just walk up to somebody that you don't even know their whole problem and say, oh, do this. That's not very wise. Did you ask them for advice? That's a good one to think about. Or was it thrust upon you? And then the last one, and one of the ones I'm the most concerned about because we tend, because we're so focused on wanting to be healthy, we tend to be very gullible about this, is ask yourself, will this person profit financially by convincing me to take this product? Oh, beware. I wish I could tell you this every single week because I hear so many people saying, oh, but this is a really good natural product. But how much of a kickback is somebody else getting because you are taking that product? All right, along that line, I would highly recommend, and this is the, world, the Adventist world that you just got this week. In the middle is a great article called Real or Fake? It's not a health article per se, but he's specifically direct addressing how much Satan is trying to set out decoys for us. And in the health world, especially the natural health world, he is just working overtime to convince people to waste their money on a lot of things that aren't going to benefit us. So I'd like to close with this thought. The Christian alone can make the right use of knowledge. Science, in order to be fully appreciated, must be viewed from a religious standpoint. So I come back to that thought. Be sure and pray. Pray diligently that God will help you as you make those decisions. And God bless you.